Oh my goodness. Okay. Hey everybody, it's John the Other, uh, obviously. Now, today we're going to be talking about Portland and the riots and the Antifa and Mayor Ted Wheeler, who may be incompetent or may be complicit. But I'm going to talk about it all from a libertarian point of view. But to get there, i got to walk you through a couple of things first. Obviously, the Portland ongoing riots that went on for three months, and they might have stopped by now, I'm not sure. I don't actually trust the media anymore. I mean, like, we've been lied to so much. I don't know whether the stories are fake, whether they're twisted. I mean, it, I can't make heads or tails. And I think a lot of you probably have the same problem. Now, it'd be easy to go, well, I think this is happening, and then start viewing it through your own personal lens. But I am at the point now where I just simply do not trust uh, pretty much any of it. I kind of have two steps to get to uh, my libertarian conclusion. One is Mayor Ted Wheeler, who I think now is in hiding, or um, he's on the run or something like that. I mean, they, the, the Antifa violent street riots began throwing burning refuse into the lobby of his apartment building and I guess trying to burn the place down. And so they know where he lives and they're harassing him. But in spite of that, I have been looking at his um, inaction, complicity, uh, quiet granting of permission to operate to the Black Lives Matter and Antifa violent rioters who are terrorizing that city and thinking, okay, oh, this is like a shot caller. This is like a criminal uh, operator who is running his troops in the town, except that he isn't directly running them. He's just kind of giving them a free pass. And when the police arrest them, the uh, prosecutors do catch and release instead of pressing charges or keeping them in jail. And it's, it seems very strange. So having looked at that, uh, one of the thoughts that crossed my mind was that is this a, an intentional operation to create a petri dish in which local militias would form because the police are failing to do their job and these militias would then engage in, you know, uh, street battles resulting in large numbers of fatalities. Was this an attempt to foster a climate creating violent and murderous militias to do battle with the Black Lives Matter and Antifa and thus justify some kind of other uh, government action? That was one of my thoughts. I mean, but I've moved on from that. One of the other thoughts I had was that what this looks like a failed state, or in fact, it is a failed state. But for the people living there, there's an inability to actually act, to, to do anything from a law enforcement point of view because the mayor, the actual still in office mayor, is basically saying do nothing. He's pulling the police back. He's, his prosecutors are not prosecuting. So... How, if you live in a failed state, when you still have an establishment of government, but that doesn't do its job, how do you deal with that? And a friend of mine and I were thinking about how you would deal with this in a medieval situation, and you would drag the head of state out into the, you know, out into the lawn of his government building, and you would probably hang him. Or maybe hang him and draw him and quarter him. But that's a little medieval, isn't it? That's a little bit rough. So I've I kind of I've mentioned that, but I certainly don't want anybody to think that that's a good idea. It's, but that is one of the thoughts that went through my head, <laughs> and then I saw this absolutely, to my mind, completely preposterous mayoral candidate running against Ted Wheeler named Sarah, I think Ayanaron is her name, claiming to be either a member of or a supporter of Antifa giving an interview on Fox News, of all places, uh, and giving the most bizarre answers. She, but she kept saying that she was running against Ted Wheeler because she's opposed to fascism. And and that was like this, this prepared answer that she kept giving as if it explained anything. Well, uh, Sarah, Sarah uh, you ridiculous ding-dong, everybody is against fascism. I'm, I'm sure uh, I don't need to tell you guys that. But if you're anti-fascist, why are you supporting Antifa? Because as, in spite of their name, they are in fact actual fascists, as are Black Lives Matter. And I know I'm, I know people are going to object. BLM and Antifa are both 
fascist organizations. They are on the ground, violent, authoritarian fascists. So a ridiculous soccer mom claiming to be, I'm anti-fascist, I'm against fascism, and, and I'm also Antifa. Uh, it seemed very strange to me. I couldn't make heads or tails of it. And I also wondered why, as a representative of a violent criminal enterprise, a, a street bandit gang, honestly, maybe terrorists even, why she is not immediately arrested. Of course, it's Portland. The terrorists and violent criminals don't get arrested in Portland. But then it made sense to me because I remembered I'm a libertarian. Now, for those of you who don't know this, the libertarian viewpoint on government is that government is a criminal enterprise. Anything that funds itself, any enterprise that funds itself through forcible theft, which is what taxation is, is a criminal enterprise. We think about government as being legitimate, but it is the social institution that has the monopoly on, quote, legitimate use of violence. But it's not legitimate. It's just criminal. The only reason we think it's legitimate is it's been going on for long enough that we're all conditioned to just put up with it. And we maneuver our lives around it because the government acts in a mostly somewhat predictable way that allows us to avoid interactions with those violent and thieving predatory criminals. So remembering that that's my actual viewpoint, that's my actual honest viewpoint of government, a criminal, an alternative criminal enterprise to the normal government, which is to say Antifa, a violent bandit street gang, actually makes perfect sense. Once you realize that the government is a violent criminal enterprise, having a overtly well-known and recognized violent criminal enterprise running as a candidate for mayor makes perfect sense. Anyway, we are certainly in bizarre world and it seems that at least the mask of deception is slipping off because the violent criminal enterprises running for public office are in fact clearly identifying themselves now. Thanks very much for watching and as always, have a lovely, lovely day.